really excited to be uh, in this conference and uh, listen to such stellar speakers as Martine. I, I should stay, say that my uh, career started out in the business, so I'm very familiar with that business. But um, let me tell you a little bit uh, about why this top topic is so important for me. But before I do, you know, being a senior distinguished architect in emerging technologies at Cineverse allows me to actually emerging technologies which are, you know, affect and impact our business. But it's all about, if I were to distill this presentation, one of the things are three points. It's what do we mean by ethics? Uh, what about data and its implications? And also the whole notion of identity in the form of digital identity. So you're going to have uh, an intersectionality between um, what I will call various topics here. One will be technical and one will be uh, uh, conversational. But if anything, it should actually spurn all of you to an action. Because my thesis is that data is being weaponized, and it has been for some time. I should also state that I do represent Centiverse uh, in the World Economic Forum on Data Policy, and also I'm a chair in the uh, IEEE uh, and, um, and Extended Reality. Ethics and whose data, what do you think about? What are you thinking? Let me just take a step back, and I think it's very, very important for all of us to take a step back because we are living in a hyper, hyper connected world. Over the, over, uh, the last two years, circa 90% of the data in the world was generated. And this, this particular pictorial uh, attribution to Raconteur tells you what we're doing. Every time we live in the internet, this is, for, this is digital dust that lives forever. So it's about the data and what's happening, what are we doing with that data and how that data is actually being mined. But more importantly, in the day in data, if you look at the top uh, right where, we, uh, where it's predicted we could be thinking about 463 exabytes of data by 2025 soon upon us, we can now say that data is here, uh, but it's more importantly, it's a day in data. So what I'm thinking about, and what, am I, what I'm thinking about when I work with my colleagues um, at the World Econ Economic Forum, and when I work with my colleagues on the whole topic of ethics and data, is that what's happening with this data? How is this data? And so we, as state before, that there is this notion of hyperconnectivity, but you that there is a notion of trust. And trust is very, very important, particularly in this discussion. Because it, as the old adage goes, it takes years, years to build seconds uh, to, uh, you know, to break and forever to repair. Think about trust. When you think about trust, what do you, what do you think about? You think about trust perhaps that it has to work. There has to be a consistency. You think about also trust in the way data or in the way your um, data is being managed or mismanaged, perhaps. And I think this is a, a very important topic because there is that uh, relationship between ethics and trust in this discussion, as I have highlighted before. But trust also is very, very key now. I mean, it's it's key to anything we do as a business. It's key to anything we do in in. And I will make a personal example because I believe in, you know, personalizing the experience that, that I have had. For example, um, a couple of years ago, about 2017, uh, my data was accidentally leaked by my service provider. And so happens about 800,000 customers were affected. And that was leaked um, for a third party. It wasn't enough, for example, that the CEO of the company came back and said, Oh yeah, I was affected also. It was who was accountable at the end of the day. It wasn't also a fact that, you know, the 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 feedback was it'll be okay, nothing nothing was hacked. But the fact of the matter is, I felt helpless in that whole experience. I was one of eight hundred thousand people feeling that helplessness. And so here you can imagine that trust and how that trust was broken. But it's more pivotal in this discussion when we talk about the importance of data and how data is managed, or in this particular case, mismanaged. 
let me just say a few things here because some people talk about data as met metadata but i will argue metadata is metadata is metadata and somehow that data is being there algorithms there are this machine learning behavior that is actually formulating some aspects about the data itself and if you recall um there was a film years ago um which was the Min minority report with tom cruise and we could see that there was pre-profiling of behavior which is already here by the way so somehow the data that gets you in data form and metadata and data data so is leaving all of this forensic what i call data dust and footprint out there and so we have to look at where the responsibility lies uh, who is accountable um, what happens when we're talking about this notion if you will about digital justice and where does digital justice go and this is an another discussion that i'm having with my colleagues on in the world economic forum because it is also a a, a hot uh, topic about who's managing whom. And so when I say, when ethics counts, whose data? And so this formulation that's happening becomes uh, an area that uh, we have to think about where that accountability lies. Concern that I will say here, because there is, as I stated before, this intersectionality between data management, fair data handling, how data is, uh, is uh, handled in itself, and where you lie in this, in this whole discussion. And so the notion there is also the intersectionality, if you will, uh, with data and privacy, data and security. So I want you to think about this topic because it is going to be a call for action at the end of this presentation. And recall what I said, security and privacy. And I say, do you believe trust is important here? It, it, there is indeed a trust deficit. So if 75% of consumers believe that companies do not take their uh, protection and security of their data very seriously, and this is from a Gemalto uh, survey several years ago, what does that say? What does that say about, the brand, uh, about data? And what does it say about the digital management itself? And so this whole area is, is, is of concern to me. And I will argue that, perhaps Copernicus was wrong, that the sun was, is not or was not the center of the, uh, the universe, perhaps the consumer is, perhaps you as a citizen are. And so I bring this to a little more of a techie discussion here because this has an intersectionality to also with next generation identity, that what we call next generation identity using blockchain, where there was a sort of siloed uh, you versus an org, versus you and the third party, an identity management platform, versus zero knowledge proofs in this whole discussion, uh, where it's more uh, public viability, if you will, with privacy or privacy. And then of course, self-sovereign identity, which is now becoming a very hot topic, where it's peer to peer. In fact, self-sovereign identity or SSI is really uh, kind of key, especially in, in what's happening in the European Union. Uh, I heard, I was actually, in, in, you know, we're listening to a digital EU event this uh, last week, and uh, the EU Commissioner von der Leyen was talking about these, this whole notion of digital identity in this form of uh, SSI, but also in the notion of um, what we will call safe artificial intelligence, which is a separate topic, but it is uh, somewhat related. So, in this, this character sovereign identity, what we think about, as I said before, you're in the middle. You do, you have selective disclosure in this whole discussion. You decide what you want to disclose. You decide how, how, what that persistence looks like and so on. And for our, our industry and for our colleagues here to watch. And self-sovereign identity has a decentralization value. Uh, Kalia Young, uh, who's been very much uh, uh, involved in this space, basically said, you know, I can put something somewhere and nobody, nobody can take away uh, away from me because it is about that notion of decentralization overall. And so these are sort of the notion of the technologies of choice here. But, you know, I also believe that digital identity sets should be persistent to you. So remember, I take you, I'm taking you through a journey from data 
to ethics, I mean, ethics and data governance to digital identity sets that are persistent, you know, persistent to you. And I think of these terms in terms of uh, lock boxes. And I've had um, computer science discussions, and uh, I think the closest um, person in the industry is doing this kind of work or trying to do this kind of work is Sir Tim Berners-Lee. And of course, there, and there was an article that came out a couple of, uh, of years ago, not a couple of years, about a couple of months ago, and basically said, that's a hard problem. Well, of course it's a hard problem. Uh, why would we not be discussing it? And so we have to think about what that persistent storage it looks like, that it is not centralized, that it's, um, you know, there is this apple steel. And I think this is the, the opportunity for our industry. So as I conclude, I want you all to get involved because it is about identity and trust. It's about dig proper digital uh, data handling. I mean, when I say proper, let's talk about fair data handling and understanding what that means in the industry. The train is basically taken off on self-sovereign identity. You should be watching the space. And ethics makes good business sense. We were talking about inclusion making good business sense, but ethics makes absolute good business sense, especially for us who create uh, this te these technologies to understand what the red line boundaries look like and what the potential of abuse looks like. We probably need a digital Hippocratic Oath. I think this is something that has uh, been uh, called out for, for some time, but I will say this, Let's create, please, the world we wish to have together and not the one we want to avoid. I'm proud to be a member of the world's most connected com company at Cineverse, and I invite you uh, and enjoy the rest of the conference because it's been awesome so far, and also to visit our booth, our expo booth, because we are hiring. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Monique. That was a fantastic presentation. I totally agree with the point you mentioned that ethics met good business side. And I think we shouldn't we shouldn't forget about that and we should help understand those who are not able to understand that. And uh, so we're not able to understand that because as you mentioned, we want to create the world that we want to live in and we want to be part of, not the one that you want to avoid. That was a fantastic one. I need to quote that. Thanks, Monique. I see many people are sharing in the chat. Uh, we still have some time for questions, though. Yes, please do. Uh, so I want to make it uh, interactive. Uh, share your questions. <laughs> share, share your questions in the Q&A field or in the chat and let us know any questions for Monique. And also make sure to drop by the booth, Cineverse booth, and say hi. As they're hiring. And thanks so much, also, Cineverse, for supporting the conference. Uh, yeah, people want to connect already. <laughs> Let's see. And I say, and I think, like I said before, it's an awesome event. You've put together fantastic speakers, but as I, you know, this being the inspirational section um, is about inspire, inspired to act, right? Inspired to act in the direction as we were talking about as technologists okay. in terms of how we, you know, create these technologies and what are what are the potentials for use uh, misuse, if you will, specific to data and data policy. Not just perceiving all the inspiring and informational content that you're receiving, but what can you do about it? What can you, how can you dive deeper? Maybe do uh, take an action at your work, take an action as a, as a, as a human being, uh, or support someone who needs the support. So part and part, this is fantastic, Anna, that we have time to, I wanted to make sure we had time for the dialogue too. Well, I think some of it is to understand yeah, technologies as well. Uh, so, 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 you know, it's about understanding the technologies itself, right? So uh, go and understand what, what what's happening in terms of data policy or, um, you know, it's not, not any wonder that we have some of the major companies who are saying, look, we there nobody understands the laws in place here, right? And the potential for the abuse we're talking about is now uh, non, they're, they're, it's borderless. Uh, I mean, I could have gotten into more uh, uh, examples here, but quite borderless. You know, there's a, a, a mantra that I, I which is live by the digit, die by the digit. But it's not, it shouldn't be dystopian. So it's to understand self-sovereign identity, understand what's happening when we look at data and data policy and data handling, because I think that's really, really important. And when you're out in the internet, understand that you're leaving forensic dust forever. Um, so how do you handle, you know, the, the um, social... Uh, social management or uh, or your social um, you know media because it is becoming weaponized very fast 
So we just want to have what we understand what it is with respons responsible handling. So that's the whole notion. And of course, you know, the, the space is uh, really, really interesting, especially when we're talking about the notion of uh, self-sovereign identity and what governments are trying to do with it, but also what, uh, what uh, uh, companies are doing with it in terms of creating services. And so this is a, definitely a space that we as Cinefers are looking at. And I see Zorana sharing in the comments such a great insight on data policy. Thanks, Monique. And that's what you I bet. love about also uh, having amazing speakers like you because everyone brings also the diversity of uh, thought, experiences, and what we are having right now, the life experience, where, as you said, I wanted to make, make sure that we have time to talk. And I think that the beauty of it, that people can interact with us and that we can talk to you and that everything is happening in life because nowadays there are so many events that's like pre-recorded and I think people are overwhelmed with the whole bunch of things that they can watch later and people are missing real events where they can connect with people but right now that's the opportunity the safe opportunity to connect and still listen to the amazing keynotes that we have here today and the sessions as well. Awesome do reach out to me if you want to know more <laughs> and and thank you Anna and team you you are just rocketing it with this uh, this conference really really impressive Thank you.